Good morning and welcome back to the Angry Astronaut here in Boca Chica once again in a hotel room. <laughs> this is getting a little old but I'll tell you it doesn't really feel that way because it's just so exciting everything that's happening and every opportunity that I get to get some content up close and personal on site. It's just an amazing experience indeed, whether it be in Europe, whether it be Wallops Island or here. And once again, thank you so much for your support. It's your support that makes all of this possible. And if you're interested in continuing to support my activities on this channel, all of the links are in the description. Let's move on. So what's likely to happen here over the course of the next one to two months, or indeed even over the next few days? Are we going to be looking at a static fire soon or an orbital launch attempt? We don't know. And which of these vehicles are actually going to be involved in the test? Are we going to be looking at S24, S25, S26, and would it be B7 or B9 or perhaps a later prototype? We don't know. So how are the flights actually going to proceed? Are we going to be looking at some suborbital flights first just to prove the flight worthiness of this vehicle, the most powerful rocket in human history, before we actually try to fly it out over the Caribbean? Or is it going to be a straight-to-orbit flight? We don't know. And that is the case regardless of which tank watching group you happen to consult with. A lot of this is pure speculation. Now, of course, a lot of the speculation is based on a great number of hard facts, but still, when it comes right down to it, SpaceX is a very opaque organization, even though they're doing this stuff right under our noses. And one thing is also very clear. SpaceX engineers are very amused at all the speculation that's going on right now. It really makes them chuckle. But that doesn't mean that we don't know anything about what's going to happen. As a matter of fact, in my opinion, I think we have a very solid scenario as to how we can expect things to proceed over the course of the next few weeks and indeed even the next few months. And it may not go exactly as the media has been reporting up to now. So we're going to check all of that out right after you hit that subscribe. So ever since I arrived at the pad yesterday, one thing became perfectly clear to me. Every day things change at this place, and plans probably change as well. Once again, we can't say that for certain because we can't really read the minds of the SpaceX engineers, administration, all of the decision makers, everything that's going on right now is not subject to our scrutiny. But one thing became very clear to me yesterday. Everything that we hear in the media about what's happening, what SpaceX is doing, all of that is to be taken with a huge grain of salt because when it comes right down to it, nobody really knows how these tests are proceeding aside from the fact that they're going well, whatever that might mean. And also, we just don't know what the status of the test articles are. But we heard that S24 had been taken off the stack by the chopsticks, that it was loaded up and taken back to Starbase for final preparations before it made its journey to orbit. That, in my opinion, is not happening because S24 is not being worked on. It's been put in the rocket garden along with all of the other retired test articles. And incidentally, visiting the Rocket Garden was a unique and amazing experience. I cannot properly describe just how colossal these things are, and you're allowed to approach them to a distance of about 50 meters or so. It is simply amazing. And by the way, the test article that's closest to us is S20, and then S24, as you can see from the numbering on the vehicle itself, and then behind that is is the historic SN15, the vehicle that actually flew and landed successfully, the only test article actually that's been able to fly and land successfully up to this point. And behind that is the B4 test booster. And although it hasn't been officially announced yet, it's pretty certain that S24 has now been consigned to the scrap heap along with the rest of these vehicles. It probably won't be destroyed because 
because it's the latest iteration of Starship prototypes, but nevertheless, it's not going to be flying to orbit. I'm almost certain of that, even though, once again, there hasn't been any official announcement. SN15, though, was an amazing thing to see in person. Of course, I've seen it before when it flew and landed, but at a considerable distance. It was wonderful to see it post-flight, and incidentally, this is, of course, the only prototype that's flown at all amongst this collection. The rest of them have been destroyed in explosions. So here's the latest construction update that we have from Starbase as provided by a group called the Ring Watchers. They seem to have the most comprehensive amount of information when it comes to progress on Starship and everything going on at Starbase, and I've been pretty impressed with what they do. As you can see on the far right, they have everything that's been retired, BN4, SN15. They still use serial number, by the way, SN24, SN20, because these are still test articles and not actually flight-worthy ships. And then you have everything that's currently under construction, such as BN-10 and then BN-9, which has actually been completed at this point, SN-26, which is also complete, SN-27, which although dismantled, is mostly complete, and then you have SN-22, which has been dismantled at this point, BN-8, which has also been dismantled, and then SN-29, SN-29, SN-28, SN-27, once again SN-27 being mostly complete at this point, BN-12, BN-11, BN-10, man, they have a lot of stuff under construction at the moment, but here's a very interesting detail. We have SN-26, which is now complete and does not have any fins or flaps at all. This is clearly an expendable test article. Article. SN27 is also the same. Very interesting that both of these vehicles are not designed to re-enter the atmosphere. And by the way, there is a strong theory, and I think it's well supported by the evidence, that the booster that's actually going to carry these ships into space is going to be BN9, not BN7. B7 has been used for a great number of tests up to this point point has been subjected to a number of mishaps, including pressure failures and also an explosion that all of us got to see. So this thing has really been through the ringer. I'm confident that they're going to use B7 or BN7 or whatever you want to call it for the static fire. But after that, I think it's highly unlikely that SpaceX is going to risk their first space bound flight to this booster. It seems a very, very risky proposition to do so. Keep in mind, if they have an RUD on the pad or a couple hundred meters above the pad, it's going to incinerate this entire region and probably set the entire project back for six months to a year, which means they want to work with the most solid and reliable equipment that they have at their disposal. That, in my opinion, is not B7. However, if B7 holds up very well during the static fire, even though they don't have a flame trench in place, then they may decide to risk it. But of course, we need to get back to these expendable test articles, SN26 and SN27. Why build those when SN25 is on the pad and has flaps and fins, and everybody's thinking that it's going to be used for an orbital test? Well, here's the reason. In my opinion, I don't think they're actually going to attempt an orbital flight with a re-entry trajectory. Instead, they're going to use SN26 and SN27 for the initial flights before they attempt a full orbital flight with a re-entry planned, which means SN26 or SN27 may fly before SN25 does, assuming SN25 flies at all. 
Now, it's altogether possible that SN26 isn't going to fly either. It seems to be a very bare bones and basic orbiter without any sort of extra equipment or features whatsoever. They may simply put it into the crusher in order to prove its structural stability to the FAA before any licenses are issued. But SN27 is clearly designed for flight. It appears to include what's called a PEZ dispenser, designed to deploy Starlink satellites, so I have a feeling that SN27 is going to be used for some sort of orbital flight to deploy Starlink satellites, but it won't be designed for a re-entry attempt. We'll see what happens. They may use SN26 for a flight as well, but that remains to be seen. It's also possible that neither of these orbiters are going to be used for an orbital flight whatsoever. Instead, they will be used used for suborbital flights which will ditch either in the Caribbean or somewhere in the Atlantic Ocean. Why would they bother doing these sorts of unambitious flights first? Well, because Starship is still not a proven vehicle at all. Most of the equipment has not been tested to failure, as is the case with rockets like SLS or even Vulcan Centaur. That being the case, they really need to demonstrate to the FAA that this vehicle is going to be controllable and safe for a flight over the Caribbean, which by the way has never been attempted in the past and flying over some very sensitive locations, the most sensitive of these of course being Havana, Cuba. So I think it's very possible that they may attempt a couple of suborbital flights to space before they go for the entire enchilada, and that's why we have a couple of expendable models ready to go before SN25, with all of its flaps and fins, makes an entire orbit of the Earth or a near orbit of the Earth and attempts to re-enter and land someplace off the coast of Hawaii. But again, all of this is speculation. It's very difficult to determine exactly what SpaceX has in mind. But a couple of things are very clear. S24 or SN24 or whatever is not going to orbit. It has been retired. I see no reason why they would put it in the rocket garden exposed to the elements temporarily rather than work on it in preparation for an orbital attempt. And given the fact that S24 has been through static fires, it was the vehicle that went through the wet dress rehearsal, and it was the vehicle everybody was saying was going to orbit, I think it makes it very clear that nobody really knows what SpaceX is doing except perhaps SpaceX themselves. But even their plans are subject to change based on the results of tests. We don't know exactly how well S24 held up under the wet dress rehearsal and the pressures involved with that. We don't know how well it held up during its static fires. It may be damaged. It may have experienced some material stresses that would be too difficult or expensive to repair. It might be simpler just to move on to a different test article. And this is what makes the Starship program so exciting and so different from everything else. This is not a rocket that's reached a high level of maturity yet. It's still very much a work in progress, and we get to see it up close and personal every single day. Smash that like, hit that subscribe, please check the description for various ways to support my content, and as always, stay angry about space!